Oh, hello there. How are you doing today, my fellow beekeepers? Uh, what do I have here? This is a pint of honey. I took uh, four frames out because I had people bugging me. Where's that honey? Where's that honey? I want my honey. I said, all right, I'll sweeten you up. So I went out there and found four deep frames, capped frames. And notice this honey here, the, the, the viscosity of it. See it? It's, it's quite thin. Although this was ripe honey, it was capped. But look how thin it is. And what this is, it's almost got a little green, it's almost got like a light green look to it at the top. What this is, is golden rain tree, Brazilian pepper mix, basically, with a lot of wildflower in it. But you can see it's real pretty stuff, and I like the flavor of it. And I'm going to show you how I extract it very simple. I don't own an extractor anymore. I used to have a... <clears throat> I built in the 80s, I built a box extractor. It took... Uh, it took... I had, was running all shallow supers. So what I created, I would uncap. I ran nine frames per box. And that gave me a real fat wide frame. And... Uh, and and I had spacers in it. They make different spacers that you can put in your supers. I put nine spacers in that thing. And what I did was cut the caps off and I would reload them back into the box. Uh, I'd pick up the entire super and drop it into the extractor. It was all homemade. Everything about it was homemade. It worked slick. I ran the thing with a little half horse electric motor. Very simple. If you ever look at a snapper rider lawnmower back I don't know what they look like today <clears throat> but they had a leather they had a leather uh, hub that ran against looking like a little flywheel so if you look at that scenario and get that in your head that's how I ran this extractor I used valve springs I think there was four valve spring car valve springs they don't have to be any particular car or whatever. I think these came out of a Chevy. Anyway, I had four valve springs on a horizontal shaft, and I preloaded those springs with a homemade compressor, and I used two collars, collars on that shaft to lock them up to hold that tension on that spring. That's what was pushing against uh, this in the end of that horizontal shaft was a flywheel. That's one thing I had turned by a machinist, and I also had another part welded up where it was it was a uh, it was a drive shaft coupler, and I it was splined. And if you see those where they they go in together in a drive shaft, that's what I used on the vertical shaft, and I sandwiched up. A leather hub in there and that's what this plate this flywheel plate looking thing would push against that and then I had a lever that I could pull back and forth to raise and lower the vertical shaft with the spline vertical shaft with these leathers on it and this preloaded this preloaded shaft would go against that that thing works slick as heck, and I ran that thing for years, turned out barrels and barrels of honey with it. And I made the uh, the actual drum itself, the extractor itself, uh, I built that out of a existing fuel tank. It was like a thousand gallon tank that a guy gave me. Actually, they extracted it from the ground, and it was still plenty solid. And they ripped it out of the ground with a tr with a track hole bucket, put great big teeth holes in one end of it, slung it on the hill. Well, it sat on the hill for quite a while. And I looked at that thing and I said, man, that is the perfect diameter for this, for my extractor. So I told the boss man, I said, uh, you mind if I have that? He said, yeah, it's junk. Take it if you want it. 
so I had no idea, you know, there was holes in it, but I had no idea. It had fuel in it at one time, diesel fuel, and I didn't know how, you know, explosive it was, so I got back, I ran a, I put a rag inside soaked with fuel and then I ran a wick way out with fuel and I lit that thing and it went rushing on into the tank and luckily I had no explosions I said okay cool so I went over there and I cut that tank out cut it out the size I wanted took it home then I cut the tank in half because it was too tall uh, the extractor was too tall and I had to get it passed through a 36 inch door opening so what I did is cut that again and I used uh, strapping material. I welded around and created a lip, or interlocking lip, where those two pieces could come together. And uh, or I could reassemble it once I got it through a door, 36 inch door opening. So I did that. It worked really slick. But uh, those days are gone. We don't fool with honey no more. It's too hard on my back. I can't lift that heavy stuff anymore. It's just ridiculous. But the way I way I extract this uh, this stuff for a hobbyist, this is very cool for a hobbyist, and you may have seen this movie out on the internet somewhere. I'm sure you have, but maybe I got a little different spin on it than someone else has. So I saw, I thought I'd show it to you. Uh, you got to come up with three buckets basically to make it easy on yourself. Three five-gallon buckets, food grade. You get them at Lowe's. And I'll show you how to build it, and we'll do that in a little bit. Let's get out here. I want to look in some of these these. Uh, since we put these together, I've had some failures on some of these little uh, two framers. Let's go in and see how the girls are doing and what their progression is. I've kept I've kept food on them, so they they've been eating uh, syrup. I put out a pollen. They're really hammering this pollen substitute right now, and uh, so that's a good thing. So we'll see how it's going. I'll see you out here in a bit. We'll get we'll get to peeking around in these hives, and then I'll show you at the end of the video how I how I get this nice pretty looking stuff right here okay guys the girls are really they're really hammering on this uh, ultra B pollen substitute they're doing good on that this this little trick works good they, they really I got to fill this up here they really are uh, working on that and they, they help them find this pollen substitute whenever you put a feeder here close uh, it really helps out uh, Brazilian pepper it's just starting to get its little little red berries on it this thing will get cherry red you can see the berries you can see why these things uh, really multiply fast in Florida Brazilian pepper this is a this is a wonderful thing I don't know in Brazil Obviously, Brazilian pepper, Brazil, I'm, I imagine half of that place is uh, covered with it, this, this, this plant. That's where this comes from. Invasive plant that we Florida beekeepers love it, love it, love it. Can't get enough of it. State of Florida hates it. Yeah, these girls are doing great. Uh, I'm going to go out, let's go out here and peek around, play peekaboo in some of these two framers and see if anything needs to be switched over to fives. It's possible. We'll see. Okay, guys, let's take a peekaboo in here and uh, take a peekaboo here and see what we got. I don't think these are ready to flip over to a fives yet. But I can see they're already drawing a little comb here. Drawing a little comb off of those Stevo frames here. See here I put three strings in this. 20 pound fluorocarbon and they're not putting up any uh, eggs or nothing here they're putting up honey stores in here so let's look over here 
see how they're doing. It's got a beautiful egg pattern here. Beautiful egg pattern. Oh yes. Oh yes. Excellent queen. This is what we want to see. I don't see her yet. She she probably running around in that box down there somewhere. They got a little more work to do. <laughs> got a little rim of honey at the top. She's probably wandering around in the bottom of this box. Which is fine. Very chill, laid back bees. So we got a little room for them here. Make sure you, if you're working bees in Florida, guys, make sure you get a bee, some kind of a beetle control on this thing. Those uh, beetle barns aren't a bad way to go at all, guys. I'm going to keep putting the food to them, letting them fatten these up. It's 85, going to be 85 degrees today here in sunny Florida. So we still got plenty of beekeeping going on. And what's the date today? Let me pull out the uh, phone that uh, Columbus gave me when he came over on the Mayflower. Yes, it's uh, Friday, November 6th today. Now, can you guys do this in Michigan or Canada? I want to ask you. I'm just being, I'm being a smart ass today, ain't I? I apologize, guys, for that. Um, yeah, let's go on. Let's keep looking here and see what's going on. I don't know what this girl's doing, guys. I don't know if she got a good mating or, or what she did. I, I don't know. It's not an egg one in here. Not an egg one in this hive. I mean, there's some larva in here, but that, that larva is from where I pulled it to install her. So I don't know. I'm going to put a question mark on this hive. We'll come back. They've drawn a little bit of comb here. So this is a very questionable queen. Probably no good. So we'll put a question mark on it, come back, and if she's not doing better later on, I'll, I'm going to pinch her head. Okay, I'm on box number three here, and this thing looks kind of fattened out here. I, I don't know. Looks to me like we might have to shift this one into a five frame or ASAP here. Yes. Yes, we do, because this thing is blowing out with larva. Now, this is an exceptional queen. She got a good mating. There is a lot of nectar on this side. I don't think I want to try wintering these over in those two framers. Although you might be able to pull it off, I don't know. But let's see what's on this other frame here. Oh yeah, she's got tons of brood here, guys. She's got tons of brood. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch this girl over to a five. Right here she is. Right here she is, guys. She's just going about her business. 
you don't really have them anywhere to lay in here. I mean, everything's getting laid up. She's putting in a lot of larvae in here. I'm gonna go over and get a five and uh, I'm gonna go over and get a five framer and switch her into a five. Okay guys, I got one of my beefy my beefy models here. And right now we are in a major pretty much a major dearth right now. And these bees are in super, super robbing mode. So you can't really leave hives open long. And this is a very weak weak colony. So let's keep them protected. I've got a, like a one inch opening in here. Well, that's too much. So I've cut a little half inch window in this eighth screen that the bees can come and go from. So that's cool. We'll keep down the robbing. We'll get them set up in a bigger home so they can start doing their thing. See if I can find her again here. There she is right there. So we know we have her and she's not crawling around the bottom of this box. Let's pull this out. Let's put this in here like so. Move her over. Now we can take this frame, slide it in, move it over, tighten up your frames. On the beefies, on the beefies, you can see how much extra room you have here, right? So, just equalize it. You got enough bee space on each side, all right? Now these bees here, we can just take these now and do one of these numbers right here. Just like that. They're out of there. Get over there, girls. These bees are very chilled out. The box that I bred these queens from was out of that Georgia stock. Here's your plugs. Save those plugs when you drill these holes, guys, and you can make these plugs for when you want to transport your bees. Okay. Make sure when you're doing these that you've got a tight These vulnerable hives that are tight, make sure you don't have any warp lids. If you do have warp lids, gra grab your shrink wrap and go around them. Put your traps back in there. Okay. So that's that. We'll put that one back in inventory. Put this lid back in inventory and we'll move on. So they got two really nice ones here and this one here, I don't know. It's, this thing here is real questionable. So I'm gonna put a question mark here and come back in a week or so. And if, she, if she's not getting tuned up, uh, there's no need fooling with her. I may go let her go a little longer. We'll just play it by ear. I usually have pretty good instincts on, on which queens are going to make it, which won't. And if she didn't get a good mating, she's she's it's <laughs> she didn't get a good mating by now, and she's not a good egg egg layer. She's not going to make it. We got to pinch her head off. All right. All right. Oh, let's move on. Okay, guys. This particular colony here, I had put a question mark on it before. When I was doing my rounds of inspection for queens that had come back from uh, laying, and I didn't see anything, but this thing is packed out with bees, and uh, they're, they're still haven't all emerged from their from their cells yet. There's plenty of bees in here, and I'm seeing multiple eggs per cell in here, and that's telling me we have a laying worker in here, which is no good. But I did see a few cells. And a few starting nice looking larvae, but I did not see a queen in here yet. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, 
these unfertile eggs in here that these laying workers are laying uh, is, you know, you're not going to make nothing with it. But we'll we'll keep an eye on it. I do need to come back and put syrup on it. It's out of syrup because there is a lot of bees in here. So let's keep moving on and check these other two right over here. Yeah, okay, there's a there's a nice looking queen, guys, and she's doing real well. She's doing real well. She's laying this up nice. And this colony here really is not ready. Is not ready to shift into a five ramer yet because there's plenty of room. See on this one, this one, as you can see. So we're going to leave this together. Put this back in and let her go do her thing. Got some real black looking drones here. Some really black looking drones right here. By the way, none of the none of the black queens made it. I was kind of disappointed in that. Because I was hoping to get some some of that black queen stock, you know, going, but it hasn't happened. They all they all uh, didn't make it, none of them. Uh, a couple of them got robbed out. They just got overrun. And I didn't, you know, I established these, as you remember, with just one frame of brood, little honey, and a plane. I'm not doing that anymore, okay? There's, to me, there's just not enough. There's just not enough bees in here to, to fight off robbing and cover it actually I would like actually I'd like to put three framers together in other words take a five frame box like I got there put three frames of bees one frame of food two frames of brood I mean yeah solid brood and uh, bees and all put in there and then put two planes and then put in my virgin queen would be to me would be an ideal scenario but I was hurting for resources and I had 20 coins to deal with so that's what I did so where you got to weigh it out is it worth it guys to do that uh, you have to decide yourself and for me I'm thinking if utilizing these twos which I have almost 30 of these now I could set them up with two full frames of solid brood, bees, and a little honey, and then install my virgin. And then after she comes back, she starts laying, we can evaluate her, and then shift them right into five frame boxes. So I think that's going to be my game plan from now on. Okay guys, this is the last hive on this little row over here. And they're drawing out some stuff and she's laying. She's laying up in here. We've got time though, because you can see there's nothing here. So we have time for her to uh, expand this box before we shift her over. So on this whole run, we've only, we've only shifted over one hive and into that five. We have time on these here. This thing is slap loaded out, it's honey bound. And then you can see here that this is, uh, so they got tons of food in here. And this is all pepper and uh, you can see it bright, bright uh, yellow, greenish yellow looking wax. Uh, I put some of this in my solar melter. Here she is here guys, right here. She's a good looking girl. So we're going to give her more time. I'm going to put the honey against the wall over here and put put this one down in here because you got brood. Put brood on brood. Brood next to brood, right? Keep everybody warm and happy and chilling. Okay. Put my little trap back in there. I could actually 
I believe there's enough room in here to actually put a beetle barn in this particular one. You can't put beetle barns in your standard uh, uh, man lake hives. With my beefy hives here, there's enough room in here to get a beetle barn in here. I had these made up, so I put them in. But you can put, if you build beefies like these, you can put beetle barns. And I like to put the beetle barns on top of the frames. I see some guys putting them on the floorboard, but I, I prefer to put them up on the top. Okay, that's about it for today on this. Uh, I'll show you my little honey operation, extraction deal. Okay, guys, I wanted to show you right quick here uh, the beetle barn. You can get these things uh, quite reasonable. I think I got 20 of them for, uh, I don't know, it seemed like it was $24 shipped to the house. And I only leave these in one month. See, there's getting a little mold in there. And uh, I leave them in one month because after, usually after one month anyhow, the girls propolis up all these holes. So you just change them out and you put them in a Ziploc and you put them in the freezer 24 hours. You pull them out, open them up. I put on rubber gloves because you've got this Max Force gel roach bait and they say don't get it on your hands. So I put on rubber gloves, Harbor Freight Cheapies. And I go into the utility room, get that, get a little bucket, and put some Dawn detergent in it, and really hot water. After, when I pull it out of the freezer, I pop out, take your hive tool pocket knife, and pop out all of the propolis. It comes right out because it's frozen, and it's super brittle. You pop it out, and then you put it in your bucket, really hot water, on your rubber gloves, and you clean out this nasty bait in here. And then I leave them... I leave them, I usually leave them on a towel to air dry. Rinse them off good after you've done this Dawn detergent wash out. And then just leave them open. And then I throw them in a two gallon Ziploc in the open position after they're dry. And then I, that way I can just go in, grab one out, it's already open. You squirt four little dots in here, you close it up, and you're ready to go back in a colony. So change these out on a monthly basis, especially if you're in if you're in a high beetle country like Florida. Uh, I don't know how many states. I'm sure Texas is loaded with them. But I wanted to show you here the spacing. See there? You can see the spacing. So you can put these in a two-framer beefy beehive, the SD beefy beehive. You cannot put them in, you cannot put them in a day dant or or, or uh, man like high. There's not enough room at the top here. So I'm getting a little stockpile of them here, uh, two frames. So they'll I'll be putting these to work in the spring. We'll be cranking out a lot of queens. This last run of queens wasn't all that impressive, but we've got some. I've got three left over here, or uh, yeah, three left over here, I think. I'm not sure, but I think I do. No, I'm sorry, that one's not, that is not a working hive right there. That needs to go in my inventory. These just two here, all three of those, I had the black queens in, they didn't make it, they got robbed out. I had a uh, black queen here in this position. She got overrun and robbed out. I'm getting a few fives together here. Uh, these fives here were made with, uh, these particular fives here were made with two standard studs, glued Bontite 3, and then I glued a half inch strip here. Very simple construction you can see it uh, this one particular one here is done with a small uh, two before uh, two by fours but these are two and a half I think these are two and a half you, you you glue three of them together and you got a seven and a half inch box so you could go either way you could buy these studs here and do it you can do it this way you can buy two by sixes turn them this way 
get your 10 inch height, glue them together and run them across the saw, get your 10 inch height, use that extra piece you cut off for handles, whatever. I went a little bit better on the plywood here. Uh, it's like cabinet grade plywood. And I happen to have uh, some deck paint, uh, some deck uh, stain that I used on these. These are dipped in tall earth, so they do have the preservative on them. So I'm starting to get a little stockpile. I've got more here. I don't have many eights left. I seem to have quite a few eight bottom boards. You know, it's just inventory you got to keep going on, building up to whatever size you want operation. But I got enough, good thing here, I got enough room for mating capacity here that I can uh, get some more queens going in the spring. We just play it by ear. Okay, Martin, uh, this here is for you. Uh, give me a shout out when you get a chance. You get down in Florida. Uh, you should be here by now. I'm sure the cold weather's chased you out of the north by now. Give me a shout out and um, come and get these. Uh, if you're going to do some queen breeding here, I've got this one here. This is a um, this is a four chambered one here, and then I've got a three chambered. Uh, that's a two. That's a four chamber, two frame each chambers, and I've got a three chamber over here with three frames each on that one right there. So give me a shout out and come and get it if you're interested and uh, start making some queens in them things because I'm going to stick right now with my till some change I'm going to stick with these two framers okay guys this is El Stevo's easy peasy honey extraction system um, I'm sure you've seen this out there whatever they actually sell at supply stores a five gallon bucket you got a honey gate in here and all that expensive stuff you don't need it for small time hobbyist guys like yourself, you don't need it. Now, get three buckets. Buy yourself three buckets, food grade, heavy duty, All right? Get three of them. And the reason you want three of them is, you can do this in the house where you, you got a utility sink or you can do it in a bathtub. Just do it somewhere you're not gonna make a mess. And, and have Miss Daisy kick your ass, okay? Thank you. Um, yeah, and what you want to do is uh, get some drywall screws. I've got drywall screws. Now, I didn't clip these off in here. You might want to take a pair of uh, lineman pliers and nip them off, or just be careful like I am, because they are deadly weapons. And uh, what I did, measured down here six inches from the top, and you just go around there with a magic marker and you put a little dot at six inches all the way around. Now I happen to space these out roughly uh, four inches apart all the way around the bucket, right? And what you want to do is take your little, go to a craft store and get you one of these little wood burners. And in the wood burner, they got different tips. Put on a little round tip like this one. And wherever you made a magic marker mark, just put this, heat this gun up. It's careful now, it's super hot. Don't touch this end, you'll fry your fingers. And just put a lid, don't poke clear through the bucket. Just put a little dimple there. Just melt a little dimple. That's your starter hole for these. Drywall screw. Then you can take an Allen wrench, uh, Phillips and go right straight through. Leave about that much hanging out, as you can see. I think those are two inch screws. And on the bottom, don't drill these holes, guys. You're just going to, you're going to have drilling mess all over the place. You're going to have shavings probably. You're going to end up in your honey and everything. Just get this little tool and just start poking holes. I started in the middle, as you can see, and I went around here. Then I went around on the outside. These are about an inch apart all the way around. It don't take but a second. You put this tool on there and go plunk right straight through. Come around and then come to one of these holes. You see what I did? I came here, 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 here. Just get a little pattern, nothing, nothing super fancy. 
so that's it that's it and then this goes in here just like that as you can see and then I made up this little bar here all this is a top bar and I put a, a drywall screw and I left it up and you can adjust this up or down here you put this in your on your box here on top of your tub like this and leave enough up so you can shish kebab it on there and then get you a little this happens to be a little Rachel Ray Rachel Ray baby uh, her some of her home product do not use metal on this plasticell guys now you could use regular comb and you can crush it whatever you want to do and drop it in a bucket okay but uh, just take a wooden tool and and just scrape it off scrape it down like this it just it's no big deal you just bring it down you spin it around and then you do this side you may want to put two of these little screws stuck up here so you got and maybe a little higher because you can see right now my top bar and my end bar is hitting there so you could you know but I, I made it work you just scrape it off in there get all your all your wax scraped off in there now you can you can get a this is a one gallon this is a one gallon paint filter bag I got at Lowe's for whatever dumb reason they were out of fives now you can take take your bottom bucket and stretch a five gallon strainer bag over it and leave it down about here right about here about six inches or so and pull the extra over this bucket and then you can do this number here okay then you don't have to filter it but i didn't have it so i had a one gallon uh and that worked great over this one gallon uh wally world pitcher it's a one gallon pitcher they get them for i mean they're cheap and this works great so you don't need honey gate valves and all that stuff there pour it in here run this up to here and i got eight pints uh, i got eight pints i ran my honey all the way to here and then you just let her drain let this drain here overnight let it drain overnight and yeah so you don't need like i said a, a gate valve and all that nonsense on this bucket once this settled pours in down here and you've got it filtered see get a if you can get a five gallon strainer if not just take that pour it in here it'll drain down in no time you take your take your filter cloth off and you've got a nice pitcher here you can fill up all your pint jars your quart jars whatever and as you as you are extracting all this comb off of here scraping it down into here Take this that's dripping wet with honey and drop it in. Drop it in your bucket, this your third bucket here. All right, drop it in your third bucket so you're not slopping honey all over your Miss Daisy's floor and uh, having your life threatened. Okay, and then take them right out when you get a full bucket. Take them out, set them out for the bees. They will jump on this stuff like ugly on whoopi goldberg okay and they will clean these right up for you and you can put them back in inventory you don't have to worry about wax moths you don't have to worry about anything this stuff is going to be fine they'll be nice and clean the bees will spit shine and polish these babies take all this extra honey back when you get done with this filter cloth Take it out, hang it out there, just drape it over one of these frames in your bucket. I just set them out on the rail out here next to the beehives. And they just come in and clean everything up. The wax, wax I take and take a garbage can lid just like that, one of them. That this wax is drained overnight in this bucket. I dump on that lid, it's still wet and sticky. I set that out in the shade. Don't put it in direct sun. You're going to melt that wax all over that lid and have a mess. Put it in the shade. Them bees are going to come in and clean up all of that stuff. 
put your buckets out there, both your buckets, lean them on a rack, whatever. The bees will come in and clean these out. All you got to do is rinse them out with warm water, whatever, and put them away for your next extraction. It's so simple, guys. It is a beautiful thing. Just like you. All right. I'll see you on the next one, guys. Be happy. Be strong. We got to keep getting our own, son. See ya.